consecutive win. Player to watch, Abdi Salim over at the right center back position. After an injury last year, he's come back full strength. Great to see him back in the lineup. And then on the other side of 4 4 2 4 Cornell, they come in winners of four in a row. Emeka and Nelly, the best player on the field for the Big Red, according to head coach John Smith, just described as a handful and will be tonight. And Nelly, a three time captain, one of the leaders of this Cornell team that has found themselves in the top 25, as we found out just a little earlier today. And we are underway from inside SU Soccer Stadium. A ranked battle, the first of two that we will see here in the Salt City this week with number one, Wake Forest, coming in on Friday. Nathan Apoku looked to play it ahead and was found on the way down a dangerous tackle and uh, the first whistle of the game. And this is what we were talking about on the ride over here. Cornell setting the tone early. They play a very physical game. They don't back down from any 50-50 ball. And Syracuse going to have to get used to that inside the opening minute. That'll be Giorgio Kachevsky to take his free kick opportunity. A player of note because well, he was sent off in Syracuse's last time here at SU Soccer Stadium. Crucial part of midfield for Coach McIntyre. Good to see him back in the starting 11 for the Orange Faithful. Put it into the 18-yard box. Cleared out quickly. The Orange, a lot of orange shirts down there, but it never really had kind of an opportunity for the Orange to do anything with it. Now, it's going to take a lot to beat Ryan Friedberg in the Cornell net. He was beat a couple times against the set piece against Harvard. So Syracuse, if they can get those crosses into the area in a dangerous spot, could be the opening goal. And the Crimson, only the second team all season to net multiple goals against Freeburg, a true freshman that has really stepped up for this Cornell side that finds themselves 7-1. That's the best start under seventh year head coach John Smith. Cornell has had double-digit wins in its last three straight seasons. That's something they've never done before in program history and are on the way to four in a row. The number 22 team in the nation. And stellar, as you see on your screen, away from home. We're talking about the fourth best winning percentage in all of Division I since that stretch, since 2018, including six consecutive road victories. Well, Coach Smith says hard work travels, and he thinks that's the case because, you know, you talk about this team's identity, it's centered around hard work and courage, and, you know, when you're away from home, it takes that extra bit of courage to play against an unfriendly crowd, and that's been no problem for the Big Red in 2022. Six wins in a row on the road. That goes all the way back to last season. Time for the second longest streak in all of Division I. Poku plays it back. Now the Big Red look to try to move it up fields. And now with space on the near side. Threaded ahead, here's the captain, Connor Droughts. And the Big Red appear to be offside there. And it's an interesting attacking formation for the Big Red lineup at 4-4-2. Traditionally, you're going to see that be a little bit more narrow in midfield, and I think that's what the Syracuse defense was expecting because they all really centered around that middle circle, and then as soon as Cornell was able to exploit the wings, they were almost in behind, if not for the assistance flag. Getting a little too overzealous in the early going, and well, the first time they really had the opportunity to move with that speed. It's something that really Syracuse and Ian McIntyre, Ian, Ian McIntyre trying to do mostly for themselves is get those forwards out in space and get them moving quickly. And that is Syracuse soccer to a T. It's pressing high, winning the ball high, and counter-attacking as fast as possible. It's just the nature of the college game that you're going to play quickly with how substitutions work, unlimited in that aspect, and Syracuse loves to make their forwards work Ball inside the 18-yard box and an opportunity for Apoku in the box, initially blocked away, and now played back. No score here, early five minutes in, and well, Philip, that's kind of in the story, the tell of the tale between these two teams. They've loved to play in these nail-biting contests three of the last four times they've matched up. Those games have gone to an extra period, and 
Well, the new rule in NCAA soccer, there is no more extra period. Got to be done in 90 minutes now. And 74th all-time meeting between these schools. It goes back 101 years. The Big Red have the slight advantage all-time, but it's always a good contest when these two meet. 5-1-2 yeah, and two since Ian McIntyre took over back in 2010. A 1-1 one, one tie between these two sides. They played two overtime periods out in Ithaca, and neither side could find the back of the net. But about as high stakes a matchup, really, between these two teams in recent memory. The Orange remaining at number seven in the United Soccer Coaches poll after the loss to Virginia, but then bouncing back with a win on Friday night in Blacksburg in a monsoon against the Virginia Tech Okies. Nobody home for the Big Red. And an easy play for Russell Shealy, who now decides what to do with it. Shealy, the senior from Georgia, he's really been the story for the Syracuse team because, Philip, you're talking about an orange side that is number one in goals against average, number one in save percentage, not just in the ACC, but in all of Division I. Orange moving with some pace forward. Here's the captain, Singleman. Played inside the 18-yard box, now back out. An opportunity on net, just rolled wide to the left. And this is more suitable to Syracuse's 3-5-2 formation. Really keeping things tight in midfield. Anthony Sinclair, that's a tough ask on the bounce, and he did well to connect with it. Never going to trouble the goalkeeper, though. First shot we've seen from either side so far tonight. Now Sinclair battling for it at the midfield line. Cornell with an early test. I don't know if you could even call it a test for Russell Shealy, but first time he's had to get his paws on it tonight. It's a creative attempt for sure, and Cornell scored from that sort of distance against Harvard, but Shealy has some excellent soccer IQ, just always knows where he is relative, not only to his own goal, but to where his defenders are. So it's going to be tough to catch him off his line. Mr. Schoberg with space now, looking to play it forward. This SU defense, this back line has been spectacular. Three goals allowed in ten matches. And well, Ian McIntyre talked about it. It's really been because of how comfortable guys like Schoberg and this back line really has been just playing together with starting. the addition of Abdi Salim back from injury. It's just about to mention his name, Salim, starting to show Bird's right, and Ogunye on his left. A lot of depth in that position for Syracuse has led to its continued success. You've got Christian Curdy, who's playing more of a midfield role, it looks like today. You've got Jackson Glenn off the bench. There's so many names for Syracuse. As he works it back into the 18, and there's the match's first corner kick. Now, we mentioned Ian McIntyre, his 13th season here with SU, and has had some success in this rivalry that's always promised good matchups between the Orange and the Big Red. What was it, 5-1-2? You mentioned the score for Syracuse versus Cornell all-time under Coach McIntyre, and has brought this team to the national tournament a couple of times, and really been a fixture on that sideline for a while now. Krzyzewski takes the corner, up into the air, and a jumping save made by Friedberg. Freshman goalkeeper from New Jersey, but well, you wouldn't know that he's a freshman with all the experience he's already garnered. He's played all but 11 minutes for the Big Red this season. Three clean sheets that's tied for first in all of Ivy League soccer. And again, for the second time already tonight, the Big Red trying to play it forward, and the far side official calling for offside. And it's less of an offside trap from Syracuse and more of the Cornell forwards just getting a little bit ahead of themselves. Maybe weren't expecting as much space on the wings as they've had so far in the opening 10 minutes or so. So just got to be a little bit more patient and curve that run just a little bit sooner. Levante Johnson plays it forward. Now works it back. The Orange applying some pressure. Johnson went flying down to the ground. Here come the big red, but not much of an opportunity for Danny Loco. Yeah. 
Singleman wins possession back for Syracuse and now trying to work in a hurry. John Smith, the Cornell head coach in his seventh season, has really turned around this Big Red program, won just one game in, their, in his first season at the helm, 114 and two, now all of a sudden, well on pace for their fourth consecutive double-digit win season. And that's something that's never been done before in program history, and Coach Smith has really defined Cornell Big Red Soccer as the powerhouse of the Ivy League when it comes to the physical aspect of the game. Never shy away from a 50-50 ball, always looking to win the second and third chances. Orange applying some more pressure, now played back out. Brandon Morales talked about the dangerous midfielder, Ivy League player of the week. And his foot played a part in all three Cornell goals, one goal and a pair of assists, a 3-2 win over Harvard. That was the Cornell Ivy League opener. And that's what you love to see from a forward who can truly create from the game, not just taking goals from themselves, but also finding ways to get teammates involved in the attacking phase of play. That sort of soccer IQ is hard to come by nowadays for a number nine. Hurdy did not catch up to it. And it was a good idea. Kaczewski tried to find him up on the near side at the box, but the big red back to field it. Syracuse definitely just feeling a little bit rushed so far in midfield in terms of decision making and where to play that ball. They've been forced to play that route one pass all the way up to the forwards rather than build it bit by bit from the back line, which is more of what they like to do. Cornell talked about it, trying to play something that Coach Smith said. A lot of times they won't play the prettiest of games, but that's how they like to play and that's how they've garnered results. And these are the games as a player that you yearn for, the gritty 90-minute contest where you have to get stuck in, and you're probably going to get a couple battle scars if we're being honest, but it just tells the story of this rivalry over the years. Headed beautifully ahead to Levante Johnson, but he's not on side. It's a decent finish, to be fair, and the home crowd certainly making their opinion heard, but from up here it did look like he just got a little bit ahead of that ball. Not, he would have had a one-on-one -on -one opportunity from point-blank range. Instead, it's possession to the Big Red. Cam McQuat, the senior defender, plays it forward. Good ball ahead to the dangerous Mitty Morales. Now he finds Drown. Opportunity inside the six. It rolls into the net. The Big Red with a stunner early. And it's 1-0 to Cornell. You can see the frustration from Sheely because this is a defensive line that has worked so well with Sheely this season. And this is the first real miscommunication. He's calling for it. He doesn't get there. Noah Singleman tried to get a touch on it and just didn't know where his goalkeeper was. The goal, the goal goes to Kisa Kingi, the junior defender. It's his fourth of the season. And really, like you said, Philip, a miscommunication between Singleman and Schilly. Oh, that ball looks over the line. It might go down as an own goal. I'm not sure, but either way, whether it's Kingy's goal or a, a Syracuse own goal, <laughs> that is one big mistake from the Syracuse back line from a nation-leading defense. Uncharacteristic and now have to recover from it. Orange looking for a quick response, but it's given away by Kashevsky. That's 13 minutes in. It's just the fourth goal given up by the Orange all season. Cornell with numbers ahead again. Noel Ortega was inside the 18-yard box, but he was offside. A team that's been so good, like you said, Philip, defensively. That back line been so comfortable playing together. Oh, well, the Big Red just made them pretty uncomfortable. And the body language has just completely shifted from the back line now. I wouldn't be surprised if they send that route one past those looping, searching balls over the top a little bit more often now, as opposed to trying to dribble up from defense.
Poku. Being hounded in what the Big Red do so well. Make you uncomfortable near the middle of the field. Play a scrappy kind of game. Down goes the captain, Emeka Anelli. It'll stay with the Big Red. That's going to be the battle to watch at midfield tonight. The two captains, Emeka Anelli for Cornell and Anthony Sinclair for the Orange. Two real workhorses in midfield and just so, so quick and amazing stamina from both of them responsible for facilitating attacks and also helping back in defense. Really, really going to be a fun watch to see those two go at it tonight. And now maybe does that strategy change with a goal in the 13th minute for Cornell? Can you maybe change how aggressive you are or change what your strategy is if you're head coach John Smith? Well, it's an early goal, and it really is an unexpected goal just from how it came about. So stick to the game plan if you're Coach Smith and if you're Coach McIntyre, because that was a one-off. Got to get back to what you do well. Danny Loco looking to play it into the box and could not. And Nathan Apoku, Cornell, saying that he got a hand on it and they would be correct. Free kick taken quickly by Lemkul. 1-0 to Cornell on the early goal from Kisa Kingi. He's his fourth of the season. 13 minutes into this one when that goal came. Now here we sit just over 15 in. Syracuse looking for numbers forward, but oh, the Big Red have done an excellent job at having guys back whenever Syracuse is trying to put the attack on. And that just wasn't the right ball either from Kuchewski. Just needed to wait a little bit for numbers to join. Wanted to spring the counterattack, and I love the idea, but got to pick your head up and see that there's too many white shirts in front of you. Need some more orange ones in there. Sheely boots it away. Orange will try to get numbers forward again. Christian Curdy on the near side boots it forward. Johnson in a battle. And he earns the foul call. This is something Levante Johnson does so well. He's a traditional number nine in the sense that when he plays with his back facing the goal he's trying to score on, he's very physical. He does a really good job of holding possession and waiting for more attackers to join in the phase of play. So him with his back to goal is maybe not something he's going to like doing a lot tonight, but it's going to be something he's going to be expected to do a lot tonight. Played inside of the 18, but not for long. Cornell able to work it back out. Syracuse has a throw in. Another opportunity for SU. Pass. Played off the back heel, but nobody was home for the orange. Instead, who was home? Ryan Friedberg. Good numbers forward for Apoku. Had the space for the shot and could have left it for Anthony Sinclair as well, but instead tried to find Johnson with no real idea of where that run was. It's simple mental mistakes like that that are going to cost the Orange offensively, especially because Cornell has done such a good job defensively in the opening 22 minutes or so. Eighteen minutes in with a one nil advantage to the visiting side. And here is a poke. SU leader in goal scoring this season with four. Orange playing with a little more pace, maybe a little more of a sense of urgency finding themselves in an early hole. A shot from distance from outside the 18 yard box. Well off to the right. Pack slate for Syracuse coming up. Cornell tonight. 
Wake Forest, one of the top teams in the nation, coming in on Friday before Loyola comes in next week. And uh, Ian McIntyre talked about his team really going to be tested with three games in a short period of time. You've got the number one overall team in the country with Wake Forest. You've got Louisville, who's been steadily climbing the rankings. You've got a tough Loyola side. It's, it's going to be a lot for Syracuse, but something that Coach McIntyre has spoke on time and time again this season is the depth of the squad he has this year compared to past years, both offensively and defensively. So there's going to be a lot of different faces rotating in and out for the Orange in the next week. Big Red turn it over. And now Christian Curdy will have a throw in. As we, welcome you in, as we welcome in Syracuse head coach Ian McIntyre. Hey, guys. And coach, probably not the start you're looking for for your team. What do you want to see your team adjust here now in an early hole? Um, look, I think it's two good teams playing against each other, and we've scored an own goal. Um, uh, so I think we've started okay, but um, look, it's goals change matches. So uh, they're doing a good job. Um, look, the left back's really causing us problems getting forward and putting some good crosses in. So we've got to do a better job of, uh, of taking care of him. It's a, uh, now, when we go forward, Levante Johnson's causing him a lot, real problem the other way. So it's getting that balance between us defending and attacking. Like, we're going to get chances um, and uh, got to move the ball a little bit quicker. But overall, we're a goal down. Let's see how we respond. Coach, speaking of going forward, we've yeah. seen a couple of the Route 1 passes over the top, but now it seems just settling things down a little bit more in midfield. What do you need to see from the wingers to really facilitate that attacking phase of play? Yeah, certainly connect uh, connect passes. Uh, they've, you know, they're, they're looking when the ball turns over to get balls pretty quickly down the sides of our back three. Um, so yes, it's uh, it's getting players like uh, uh, Giorgio uh, and Noah on the ball a little bit more. Uh, and it's uh, look, it's a, it's a good football match, and uh, I think uh, hopefully we can uh, get a goal before the half. All right, coach, thanks so much for the time, and best of luck. Thanks, guys. Syracuse a ball into the box, and once again, the Big Red able to play it out quickly. Singleman back with it, slips, and it'll be a foul against Cornell. As Singleman went down and went down in kind of an ugly fashion. Mr. Schoberg My apologies, right? is also down as well. So right, Schoberg right outside the box and Singleman coming up hobbling at the midfield line. Two really integral players to this Syracuse starting eleven Phillips, something that you certainly don't want to see. Well, it's good to see Schoberg back on his feet. And a good opportunity, too, for Coach McIntyre to make fine-tuned adjustments to the game plan and pick players out one-on-one. -on -one. You heard him on the microphone. Kuchewski and Singleman, the midfielders, need to just see more of the ball and connect passes a little bit better. They've been doing that for the most part in the past two or three minutes or so, but still not doing it to the level that'll really open up shooting chances for Nathan Apoku or Levante Johnson. Singleman holding on to that hand. As is Schoberg, who's getting it taped up as we speak, as you see on your screen. Big Red appear to be incensed with the fact that there's a foul being called at all. The sound of the whistle is something both sets of players and, of course, the fans here and at home are going to need to get used to tonight. So Salim will take it from midfield. And this Cornell team, we talked about how aggressive they like to play. And, yeah, as you can see, Hardy, seven fouls against the Big Red here in the early goal. compared to just one for the Orange. And Ian McIntyre said, well, if we're going to get a win, it's going to be because we play our style. Right now, Cornell's playing their style. Absolutely, and that style is courage and intensity, the two words that Coach Smith used to define his side style of play. Winning the second ball, 
getting those passes forward quickly, getting those passes forward two feet, and really testing this back line. Morales can't catch up to it. Now Sheely will look for an orange shirt. Finds Johnson. Amphrey Sinclair, the captain, plays it to the far side. Now an opportunity inside the box and just wide to the left. But that's better from the Syracuse midfield. As I mentioned earlier, Levante Johnson playing well with his back to goal. Up and opens up space for Sinclair. Then on the far side, that's a really tough angle to have a strike from. Credit to the defender for cutting off the angle for the ball to the back post, but it's better from Syracuse, and that's what they need right now. Giona labeled who opened up the scoring in Blacksburg. The one with the opportunity that just missed out on inside the box a moment ago. Orange win it back. Numbers ahead again. Threaded into the box. Taken away. The freshman, Andrew Johnson. You see the orange shirts on your screen just stepping up bit by bit. Everybody getting forward. Orange continuing to apply the pressure. Inside the box it goes. Diving stop made. Testing Friedberg a little bit more. And like you said, Philip, a little more encouraging for Syracuse, but just nobody home. That was Here a, on the cross, eh? That was a nasty step over by Apoku and then label first time cross. That's exactly what you need to see. Just nobody making the run that time. But if you keep feeding those passes out to the wing and you keep getting it off your foot quickly, that's what's going to create problems for the big red. Anthony Reeves went tumbling down. So here's a free kick opportunity for Cornell. Given away and now racing ahead of Poku. Now that ball played too far. That ball was played behind him. If you're going to lead the striker on, you got to play it in front of him so he can run onto it. You play that ball behind where he's running, there's no way he's going to be able to turn around, let alone get to the ball before the defender. It was a great interception in midfield, but again, it's just those tiny mental lapses that are preventing Syracuse from leveling this match. Now an opportunity, Noel Ortega will put it on net. Got an easy save for Sheely. I think that technically counts as a shot, but like with a lowercase s, really, but... <laughs> Cornell, I mean, that's the first look at goal they've had in the past couple minutes or so, and it wasn't really that good of a look. So credit to Syracuse for dictating the tempo. But once again, you can dictate the tempo, you can dictate possession, you can be better in every stat category, but if you're not better in the final score, it doesn't matter. Abdi Salim with it. Kearney had nobody home ahead. Easy giveaway for the Big Red. Now here they come. A near dangerous collision at field at midfield with Sinclair, a guy that has dealt with some injury troubles. And SU with possession back. Here's Noah Singleman. Cannot play it forward. And that big red defense that has stayed aggressive, has really stayed on point throughout these first near 30 minutes now. Well, Singleman did so well to keep the ball at his feet and evade a challenge or two, but again, not finding the right pass. You can dribble all you want, but you got to pick out your teammate at the end of the day. Syracuse plays it hastily. Now with some numbers forward again. Singleman inside the box. We'll try on nets. And just wide to the left. Once again, the orange bit by bit. Just getting a little bit better, getting a little bit closer. That's a great turn by Singleman. Needed the second touch to get it out of his feet. It's a good look at goal. Again, another well-placed defender trying to squeeze that inside the near post. 
It's a solid shot, but a really, really tough angle. He's had a couple of looks early, has Singleman. Scored in SU's last game against Virginia Tech. Of course, had that moment of magic the last time Cornell was here. An overtime winner back in 2019. Orange win it back. There's Singleman again. Staying persistent, staying with it now with pace. Here he comes inside the 18. Little overzealous on the pass, and now Syracuse fighting for it in the corner. Able to earn the foul and an opportunity. That's a fantastic win by Apoku. Did well to get on the end of the ball and really didn't have a lot of options, so just tried to nick it by his defender with a little nutmeg. See ya. Takes a slip, it's an absolute foul. It's a good call by the referee. Cornell, player appealing that, you know, he wasn't gonna go anywhere, but you still tripped him up after the nutmeg. So, promising opportunity from the set piece now. McAllen a little over aggressive, and it's the ninth foul already. Koshevsky to take the kick. Into the box it comes. Opportunity for a header inside the six, but it isn't there. Levante Johnson was in the right place, but just couldn't time it up right. I mentioned earlier that the Big Red have had their troubles defending the set pieces, and Johnson just took his run a little bit too shallow. But still, that's better. That sort of aggression in the air is what Syracuse needs right now off those set pieces. Orange have yet to get really a lot of clean looks. Save that one shot we just saw from Singleman because of how aggressive this Big Red defense has really stayed throughout the night. Big Red trying to play it ahead and cannot. Schoberg off of the official. And Ian McIntyre is incensed. He can't believe it because of the pace Syracuse trying to play it forward, and that stalls it. Well, Coach McIntyre has every right to be upset with that one. It's unfortunate positioning from the referee but that really could have been a clean breakthrough. We've seen a couple of those long passes over the top not bear fruit. I had a feeling that wasn't going to be one of them, but we'll never know. So with the stoppage, Cornell able to get numbers back and apply pressure. Here's Christian Curdy. Cross comes into the box. Near opportunity, Syracuse still with it. Singleman shot was blocked. And the Orange work it back in. Yes, they can. Another cross, opportunity on net. And they had to force the hand of Ryan Freeberg, a diving stop, and another good look on net for the Orange. Again, it's just that little bit closer to scoring, but Liebel does well to make the space, and then just the first touch is too heavy. It's out of his feet and really has to stretch to try and get the shot off. Takes an extra touch, too. If that was a two-touch shot, it probably wouldn't have been a goal. It's a three-touch shot and an easy save. One thing to note for the Orange fans is we've seen a couple substitutions for Cornell. Kirk Kalov and Colin Byros ready to come on for Syracuse. These are two players that are going to help increase the pace of play in midfield. Both really good dribblers, and Kalov's got a heck of a shot on him. So this could be a really exciting substitution for Syracuse. Looking for a little more offensive firepower. You've seen a little bit of a shift in Syracuse. Really the side that's been getting more chances, even though the side, the, the score would not indicate that. Well, it's it's the response they needed, and they've done better getting closer to the goal, and Friedberg's time is slowly waning away before he has a shot that's truly going to test him. And if they keep playing like this, it's a matter of time before it's 1-1. Six shots for the orange compared to just two for the big red. Shots on goal, however. That's just 1-1 one, one apiece. And the one for the Big Red, a pretty big one. 1-0 one on the goal scored in the 13th minute of this match. Credited at the moment to Connor Droughts. We weren't sure if it was an own goal. We weren't sure if it was going to be credited, credited to a Big Red player. And in fact, it is. On what was a miscommunication, a kind of awkward moment inside the six early on between Singleman and the goalkeeper, Russell Shealy. Well, all the stats fans among the audience will be itching to see whether that does go down as an own goal or not. But more importantly for Syracuse, it's 1-0 on the score sheet. 
And the response has been there, but just not executed. They've gotten the nine passes out of 10 to get up there, and then that shot is just what's been failing them as of late. And the referee needs to have a little bit of a talking to here. Uh, some extracurricular activities as Brandon Morales won the foul, and Cornell is set to take this free kick after a little chat with the official. Well, that's good refereeing, though. Cards have stayed in the pocket for now. No real need for them so far. And just making sure, like, keeping both of these teams in, in line. Kick taken by Drought into the 18-yard box. Opportunity on net. And just to the left, Daniel Samways had point-blank range and could have nearly converted. Oh my goodness, uh, if you're Syracuse, I don't know how you let a player get that free. It's over everybody. Credit to Samways for a great first touch to bring it down and then tried the little Travella outside of the foot volley, which is incredibly technically difficult. Didn't miss that top corner by much, but was a very small window to aim for. But for Syracuse, you got to do better with that. Johnson to the bench, Byros in, as is Kirk Kalov, like you said, Philip. Syracuse will try to get numbers ahead again with a big boot from Sheely. Out of bounds it goes in. Singleman will have a throw in. The Orange push numbers forward and find that equalizer. Just under 12 minutes to play here in half number one. One nil. Cornell looking for the upset and with the early lead here at SU Soccer Stadium. to aggressively playing into the box. Three Cornell defenders were waiting on it. And an SU player tried catching up. Offside the ruling. Well, it looks like a little bit of an interesting tactical shift going on as well. We saw Noah Singleman on the far side of the pitch for the most part. He's come over to the near sideline, whereas Kurt Kalov, who's brought in as a midfielder on the depth chart, is just inching forward a little bit more, and that's where Coach McIntyre likes to see him play. He says if we can get Kurt higher up the pitch and really speeding things up, that's the best use for him and for the team. Kalov nearly able to steal it away, but cannot. Now fighting ahead, Connor Drown. One on one with Oya Gunley. And the official is telling him to get up. Maybe a little bit of an embellishment, and that's what the referee noticed. I don't know if you heard what the official said, but he said there was an extra elbow in there mm. from the Cornell attacker. He says, next time, that's a yellow card. That's great officiating right there. You tell the player exactly what you think and exactly what happened if he tries to pull that move again. Really aggressive challenge, both of them, Oya Gunley and Trout going at it. And that is the physicality and the kind of mindset that this Cornell team really wears on their sleeve. Again, we touched on it earlier as a player. These are the games that you wait all week for. It's going to be gritty. It's going to be intense. And there's not going to be a lot of pleasantries going on until the final whistle sounds. Orange just clear it out of bounds as the ball was played into a dangerous area. Under 10 to play in the first half. The big round, a stunning lead early. The goal in the 13th minute by Connor Droughts. The Big Red looking for their first win over SU since 2017. That also came here at SU Soccer Stadium, a 1-0 final in overtime. One hopper to Sheely again, who will kick it as far as he can, where Nathan Apoku is waiting. Here's Samways, who had the close chance. Nobody home for SU. Have kind of lived in that attacking half, but haven't found really that ability to finish it, to find that kind of crucial moment to put one in the back of the net. And they haven't been 
back up there for a while, and you saw in that last possession, every pass was one touch or two touch, and then when it fell to Apoko when he took it his third and his fourth, by that time a Cornell player was already on to him, and the ball's all the way on the other side of the field. Shelly forced to come off his line again. The goalkeeper who's been so good for SU this season concedes just his fourth goal of 2022. Syracuse as a team, you're talking about number one in the nation in goals against average, number one in the nation in save percentage. And both of those numbers can be attested to Shealy because Lucas Donauer has only played in one game this season. Right, and you saw there in that graphic in the last three games, conceded two goals. It's, it was half of four. I mean, the stretch from Syracuse defensively in the last couple games hasn't been their best. Even the 3-0 the shutout against VT on Friday. Sheely had to make a couple of really good saves. Hey, McIntyre said his team came out slow, really in the start of both of those halves, but that's well, a 3-0 final. You wouldn't exactly know that. And, you know, a clean sheet is not just the goalie, it's the whole back line working together in harmony, but he definitely was more active in Blacksburg than I think Coach McIntyre wanted him to be and has already been pretty active tonight. Made four saves in that victory for Syracuse. Well, the Orange jumped in front early and never looked back. Cornell with it inside the 18. Locked away by Oya Gunley. And out of bounds. Out of the woods for now. And that's better from Oya Gunley on the 1v1. He got burned a little bit on that 1-0 UVA game. One-on-one -on -one that led to that 85th minute winner. Much better now, he's smart, he knows where he is inside the area, he just keeps his hands off the player. Crossed in, can a Cornell player get there? And nearly, the three-time captain, Emeka Anelli, nearly had a look on that. I was praising Oya Gunley, but that was, was a little bit shaky there, but in the end, just did enough physically to push Emeka Anelli off of his plant foot. Didn't really connect well with it. Red still with it. Nice touch pass from Noel Ortega. Hughes wins it back. Under six minutes to play here in half number one. Cornell is kind of caught up offensively. It was a six to two advantage in shots, now it's six to five. But the game stylistically really being played the way the Big Red want to play it. It's been physical, it's been aggressive, and it's a 1-0 advantage to Cornell. Fighting inside the box, that'll be awarded to Syracuse. What Cornell has done in the past couple passages of play is just been patient with the two forwards. In a 4-4-2 formation, you're having those two forwards work just about 10, no more than 15 yards away from one another. And when they hold up the ball and they're connecting passes, that's the signal for the four midfielders to rush up offensively. And they've maintained possession, which has allowed the midfield line to consistently get forward, which not only means playing passes, but also blocking passing lanes for Syracuse when the Orange win the ball back. Ortega lost it. And that pressure. You see it time and time again. And that, an aggressive challenge. It's got to be a yellow. Noel Ortega sent Abdi Salim flying to the ground. And we have our first booking. You saw the referee. He gave Ortega numerous chances. It's a late challenge. It's a shoulder in the back. Letter of the law. It's a reckless challenge. Deserved yellow card. Well refereed. And clearly unnecessary and late after the ball was played. Salim with it, just looking to play back. Yeah, just two hands on the back, shoves him over. I mean, it's a simple decision for the referee and crew. And in the end, Ortega's got to know a little bit better. He knows that he was walking that tightrope. He had a thin line, and in the end, he crossed it. It's the 11th foul. Just 40 minutes of play for this big red side, and the most aggressive one yet. Orange with numbers forward. Played ahead, Kurt Kalov. 
Tries taking a shot from distance. And with that hesitation, Philip, Cornell got numbers back, and they're able to block it before he can really challenge the goalkeeper, Freeburg. Well, props to Cal for picking his head up when he took that first touch and looked around him. He looked to the far side and saw that there was nobody making the run with him. So in the end, he had to try a crack on goal. He had a go. And in, like, once again, I've said it before, the defenders are positioned very well to block those shots. Under four minutes to play here in half number one. Syracuse has found themselves in a hole since the 13th minute. Connor Drought's tapping on what could go down as an old goal. Own goal. That's the only tally on the board right now. Battle at midfields. Oh, no. That'll be another foul. A concerning sight to see. Anthony Sinclair, who just came back from injury against Virginia Tech. I mean, a really, really aggressive challenge. And it's Ortega again. I beg your pardon, that's Matthew Hutchinson. That sent him tumbling to the ground, and I mean, you're talking about a challenge. Look how high up that leg comes. Sinclair got ahead of him, and you know Hutchinson's claiming he got a touch of the ball, but before he did that, he took out the entire right leg of Anthony Sinclair. And as you mentioned, there was a lot of force in that. I think he's a little lucky to get away with the yellow. It's not enough for a red, but maybe an orange? A lot of force in that, really. <laughs> so a free kick opportunity. The clock stopped at three minutes from Outside the box on the far side. We're talking about five orange shirts camping out inside that 18. Can it find one of them? Here it comes. Headed away. Back out to Sinclair. And blocked away beautifully by the big red defense. Here they come. Ortega sprinting ahead. That's a yellow as well. Orange catching up to it. Giorgio Koshevsky, who was sent off. I don't think that's what Ian McIntyre wants to see. Picked up a red on Friday, and he's booked once again. I had a feeling as soon as you saw one, you're going to see a lot. It's a foul in transition. It's a fast break. Just trips him up. It's a yellow every day of the week, and you know, a lot of those fouls, when there is a breakaway like that, you just take them out. It's a smart foul, you take the yellow card, you move on. But really, the Syracuse defense did a good job of showing Ortega the wrong way. He had a man on his left shoulder, wide open to see Sheely one-on-one, showed him to the wrong side of the pitch, and that foul, really not necessary with the numbers Syracuse had back at that point. But it's already, what, three yellow cards now? Probably going to be a lot more. Three really coming in this recent stretch. Here's Cornell chipping it ahead. Not for long. I figure the big red intent on just trying to slow this down. A 1 0 advantage. They've been playing their aggressive style really throughout these first 43 minutes. There's Ortega who was just fouled, goes down again. Went down fairly easily that time and no whistle for the official on the challenge from Kellogg. Well, no complaint from Ortega either because he knows he got the ball poked away from him. Good challenge on the near side. Poked ahead by Francesco Pagano, but no numbers back for Syracuse. Boot high in the air from Friedman. Friedberg, rather. The Orange just missing that extra step. Talked about it with the chance early with Apoku and there with Kalov. It's either played behind, it's played a little too strong, and it's been the story. 
The Orange will have possession back here. Good fight from Oyagumli. Once again, one on one, not afraid to get physical, but staying within the laws of the game. It's definitely something that's steadily improved from him, picking and winning his battles over the course of this season. One minute remaining in the first half. One minute remaining. Under a minute to play here in half number one. Sheely motioning his player, saying, hey, get forward. Try to make something out of these final 40 seconds. Orange with numbers now. 30 seconds to play in the first half, but take it away. ahead Ortega again but a beautiful sliding tackle from none other than Abdi Salim. Final seconds tick down. Shealy won't even play it until he's forced to. Out of SU Soccer Stadium it goes. And half number one comes to a close. One nil the advantage to the Big Red. On the goal in the 13th minute by Connor Trout and what's been a physical battle. On the receiving ends, Trout at 1-0 to the Big Red as we're through 45. Minutes in, looking pretty deserving of that ranking. Absolutely, they got four votes last week in the coaches' poll and then this week they get 33. Syracuse 8-1-1 one one, looking to avoid their second loss of the season. And for Cornell, 7-1. And, one. and hey, the common opponent that's given both sides trouble, the Vermont Catamounts. Vermont, always a strong program. They've had a game against Maris as well, where Cornell suffered a couple injuries in that one. And they've responded brilliantly today, and as well against Harvard earlier in the week. So these two teams, not unfamiliar playing against each other and playing against similar teams. And it really speaks to the strength of college soccer in this part of the country. Forcing a 1-1 draw for Syracuse was Vermont. And of course, the Orange fell last time that they were here. A 1-0 defeat down a man to the Virginia Cavaliers on Friday. Here they are down 1-0 to their rivals from Ithaca. Big Red begin with it. Vying for an opportunity inside the 18 already. And Kisa Kingi went flying to the ground near the end line. And that was what we saw in the first minute of the first half. Cornell putting a big challenge in. Oya Gunley extended that arm there a little bit. I don't know. That definitely could have been called a foul. I think he's a little lucky to get away with one, but once again, setting the tone early about the physicality of this match. And you wonder, Syracuse, do they come out of the locker room trying Maybe to be even more physical, try to match it because Cornell, 12 fouls. They have certainly set the tone from a physicality standpoint. Danny Loco just outside the box. We'll try on net. Takes a couple of bounces into the midst of Sheely. That's the best look at gold and I think Cornell has had since they found the back of the net. Good move by Loco to beat three Syracuse players and needed to connect a lot better on the shot. But questions to be asked about the orange back line. Why do you need three players marking one at the top of the area? Because you get beat with one little move like that, and suddenly Sheely is left out to try. Seventh shot of the match for Cornell. Now a battle for it at midfield. They've come out firing, they've come out aggressive, really in the attacking half. Have the big red here about a minute and a half in. Well, you heard Coach Smith talk about it when he came on the headset. It's those passes through the middle. With the 4-4-2 formation, they've got a little bit more of a narrow tuck inside with the central midfielders. And Syracuse did have trouble playing against that direct ball along the ground in the first half. And it's led to a little bit of success to start the second. That clearance finds the bleachers. Go, 
Well, Yagunley will play it in for Syracuse. You'd figure with a sense of urgency. We're now looking for a major upset, looking for its first win against Syracuse since the Big Red got it done right here at SU Soccer Stadium five years ago. That was also a 1-0 final. Hanford and East Sinclair plays it back. And this pressure permeated from the Big Red, forcing the Orange to play it back. And maybe taking it out, taking them out of their playing style. Here come the Big Red. Cross comes in, cannot find Kisa Kingi. But he tracks it down. Looks for a cross in himself. Ortega lost it. But instead, here's Kaloff. Up ahead with space. Looking forward. Here's Nathan Apoku inside the box. Nice move to get free. Try and play it back for Gianna Labels. Sinclair. Ross is blocked away, and that is what the Big Red have done. They've gotten bodies in front and blocked it away, but on the orange side, you'll take the opportunity, and you'll take the corner kick. But it could have been so much better. It was well done by Apoku to hold the ball, and then Label just kind of crossed paths with him at the wrong time. But the thing I love about that play was Anthony Sinclair, as soon as he got the ball, put it out to the wing, tried to facilitate that stand up cross the back post without any dilly dally. That's what the Orange need. They got to play quick, they got to play crisp. Kalov will take it from the far corner. Here it comes. Rolls back out. As Label tried chipping it in, and forced Friedberg to make a jumping stop. It's the right idea, but it's the wrong execution in the end. Label just let it run too far and really should have taken a touch. Credit to Booster Schoberg for trying to give Ryan Freiberg a little bit of trouble in the air, but as you mentioned earlier in this one, the true freshman goalkeeper hasn't earned that spot for nothing. He has been the man in front of the net for Cornell really all of this season. 7-6-2, goals against average for Freeburg. That's second in all of the Ivy League. Cornell as a team been pretty stout defensively. Six goals allowed in this their ninth contest. And look out. Sheely, Sheely had it poked away. That could have been disastrous. Yeah, that's uh wow. <laughs> that's a sigh of relief for Russell Sheely because that was dangerous. And it speaks to how Cornell look a little bit on the defensive press in the second half. Instead of really the two strikers in the 4-4-2, they're having a winger on each side, depending on where the ball is, a winger on the opposite side, just cheating up a little bit to facilitate that counterattack. And in the end, Sheely almost got robbed. And now the referee is instructing the Syracuse bench to calm down. Saying, oh, if that continues, you're going to be punished with a yellow card. Nathan Apoku being hounded. Big red defenders as he's been much of the night. Cornell has neutralized Syracuse's leading scorer, at least to this point. Those opportunities that we saw in the first half haven't really presented themselves yet for Syracuse. Cornell has upped the ante from a physicality standpoint. The big thing for Cornell is they're winning the first and the second ball. What that means is when someone plays the pass to somebody and it gets away from them a little bit, and it's kind of in a little bit of green grass on its own, you got one player from each team running to it. That's the 50-50 ball each player has a 50-50 chance of getting it, right? But Cornell has been winning those second and third battles, those 50-50 chances. That's why they've been able to see so much of the ball. And that's why Syracuse, when they eventually do get the ball back, haven't really been able to do much with it. Shots eight to five in favor of Syracuse. None of those eight coming here in the second half for the Orange. And none of those eight really maybe except one had much of a chance of 
finding the back of the net with or without a goalkeeper, let alone with a goalkeeper of Friedberg's caliber. He stepped up but hasn't really been challenged in the way I think Ian McIntyre was hoping that his team would. Here's the ball up ahead. Kingy able to win it. One on one just outside the six. Now played back. Danny Loco. Can he cross it in? Orange able to block it away. It's a northern corner kick for the Big Red. It's great work by Danny Loco again. This broke out his dancing shoes a couple of times. <laughs> and once again, Oloy Gunley just playing smart on the 1v1, not lunging in in the area and just shielding it out for a corner. We've seen Cornell in that first half, they almost had a goal off a set piece. So maybe they can get the second here. Connor Drought, the goal scorer, will take it. Here it comes. Headed away by Syracuse. The Big Red hold on to it. The Big Red had to let it roll so they wouldn't go offside. That was the thinking initially, but then they found themselves offside anyway. So the whistle doesn't sound on offsides until the player becomes an active part of the play. And what happened was the ball kind of rolled in to the corner and the attacker went, mm, I don't know. And then as soon as he started kind of jogging to it, that's when the whistle sounds. It's a revision, a recent revision to the offside rule that is a good one. Collision at midfield that sent two Cornell players down to the ground. Kurt Lemkul came down maybe a little bit awkwardly. Maybe I'm trying to sell it to the official I'm more than sure anything else. I'm not sure was in that. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I was really looking. I thought maybe just from the way he went down, it was just a clash of kneecaps, which always stings, but didn't really look like much was in there. It's kind of hard to see exactly where the contact might have been if there was contact. No, I think there was a reason that the whistle didn't go for a foul. Instead, as we started with the drop ball. Played ahead quickly, another opportunity for Kisa Kingi. Being hounded quickly by the Orange. Now able to get free, the dangerous Brandon Morales. And the last thing you want to do if you're Syracuse is give him a chance. That came awfully close to hitting the hand of Andrew Johnson. That's what the crowd is clamoring for, but play on, says the official. Ever since that handball appeal, you could sense the tempo was a little higher and the frustration was building on both sides. So I was waiting for the whistle to sound and really was expecting a yellow card foul to happen, but on, Cornell win a set piece rather softly, but once again can take advantage from it. Hard round to take it. With 10 minutes passed, you're in half number two. Drowns goal. The only tally so far. Ball comes in and really could have been dangerous for Cornell. Two players unmarked at the back post this time. It's the two for one special for the Syracuse back line. And it uh, looks like, yeah, it did. They, uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. A little bit of pinball. But again, if you're Syracuse, you got to rise to the challenge. Coach Smith spoke about the key to this match for Cornell just being outworking Syracuse. And they've done that, especially on those set pieces in the air. Daniel Sanways had a volley at the end of the first half, and then that would have been a great chance if not for the little miscommunication there. Kashevsky who picked up the yellow card, he comes out. In comes Lorenzo Boselli. I want to see what Baselli really brings to this Syracuse offense because Coach McIntyre says in any other year, Baselli's really a starter for this midfield, and he's so good on the ball, and really that's what Syracuse needs right now. They've been burned on the dribble on the 1v1 a couple of times. They need someone who can not only beat their defender but play a smart pass afterwards. Taken away. Here's the captain, Emeka Anelli. 
Red have really controlled possession and lived in the attacking half. Here in the second half. That's out of bounds and a goal kick. Shealy waits for orange shirts to come a little bit more forward. to Giona Leibold. Comes back with it. Here he comes near the 18-yard box. Played in. And once again, white shirts back to make the play. Yeah, but that was liquid football in midfield. I mean, every pass, one touch, placed perfectly. In the end, it was the cross that wasn't. Opportunity maybe again here. Opportunity indeed. Colin Byros comes back out. Christian Curdy with the cross in. A chance inside the box. And the man that just checked in, Lorenzo Vosselli. Well, you can't get a much better look on net than that. The half volley is one of the most physically and technically demanding plays in soccer. That's a great chest down by Apoku to control it for his teammate. And then as the ball was bouncing upward is when Vosselli chooses to strike, so he always is going to get underneath it. It's a good look. Once again, the execution is what falters. That aggressive challenge sent the goal scorer, Connor Drought, to the ground. It looked pretty physical, but the question, how hard was that hit? And if it wasn't, how much could he be embellishing it? Well, it was a long whistle from the referee. So if this kind of physical play continues, I have a feeling we'll have yellow card number four knocking on our door. Three bookings that really, Philip, kind of found themselves in a really short stretch near the end of the first half. But the physical play, that hasn't been one stretch here, one stretch there. That's been the entire match. Well, and credit to the refereeing crew as well, because you can't go too early with a yellow card. you got to keep control of the match. And so far, the green shirts have really done that so far. Hold on. Substitution, for Substitution here for the Big Red. I was wondering what the whistle was for, it's just for the substitution. I was wondering if there was going to be another parent-teacher conference again. We saw a lot of those in the first half. <laughs> Matthew Goncalves is in. Danny Loco, who had a pretty quality look on that earlier in the half, he comes out. Toss in for the orange. Did that touch a player? The refs will say it did touch a big red player. Played quickly ahead. Boselli, who just had the look, cannot find his man Kalov ahead. That has been the story. Finishing. It has not been there tonight for the orange. Well, the problem is they haven't really given themselves opportunities to try and strike at net. Off the throw in the first pass was a little too heavy, and then the second pass was too heavy. And by the time there was the third pass, there was no chance the attacker was going to get on the end of it. Just the little things like that. And when Cornell is playing this well and Syracuse is forced to play this quickly, sometimes it's a little unfair and you gotta be on the precise blade of grass with that pass every time. And, and when Cornell is playing like this, Syracuse, if they aren't playing Syracuse soccer the way they know how, they're never gonna get a look at goal. Another aggressive challenge at midfield. Let, ref's gonna let them play on. And here's the dangerous Morales. Initially, numbers ahead for Cornell. And now the place will slow down. Here comes the cross. Kingy had a chance. Went flying over his head. And, well, tried to sell that dive. No. Well, the, Kingy was already in the air. And the problem was there was contact late. There was contact. It's a good ball. It's overhead. You see, right as he jumps, Curdy puts a little bit of a shove. Is the contact unnecessary? Yes. Is it a penalty? Absolutely not. There's no way that Kingy, with or without contact, is getting on the end of that cross. It's good no call. Really a little too much on that cross for their 
to be any sort of opportunity to begin with. Another dangerous collision at midfield. Number two on number two. Well, it's Kenny and Curdy, the last two on the last one. So, you know, it's just a matter of which player gets the last laugh, right? I mean, in a gritty battle like this, you're never going to give your opponent ground. And if you get knocked down, you got to get back up again. So, I mean, we've said it all night, but don't expect it to change. One thing that hasn't changed has been this aggressive, tight press from the Big Red. Orange able to thread through it. And there's enough time for Giona Label to get back to it. On the near side, one on one. Cross comes in and immediately booted away again. Cornell has had numbers back all night, and that the case there again. Now another foot race. And Morales can't win it. The dangerous star for this Cornell side. Hasn't really played too much of a factor here tonight. Well, the thing with Morales and the rest of this Cornell side is when they get the ball, A, they're looking to play quickly, and B, they're playing the way they face. Which means, you know, if you're opening up to the left side, you just send the ball that way. Syracuse, every time they get the ball, they're looking to try and dribble. And that's because, well, you know, against a physical defense, if you try and go for the dribble, a lot of times you get the foul. But on the other hand, if you try and go for the dribble and get beat, now you got to get back on defense. So Syracuse been relying a lot more on fancy footwork, whereas Cornell have just been playing simple soccer, playing it well. That's why they've limited the chances for Syracuse, even though Cornell hasn't really seen a lot of the goal in the second half. Only three shots on goal for the Big Red. They're getting out shot on the night. Nine to seven. Cross comes in for Syracuse. Nearly found an orange shirt. What it did find was a dangerous area. I wonder if Callum was looking for the shot or not. Let's see from his body language. Might Ooh, very well have been. I don't know. Yeah, it, he really looks. It looks like he was trying to catch Freiburg off his line with a little bit of the dip on that ball. But either way, Syracuse are putting those stand-up crosses into the area, but not really finding any jerseys. Played ahead here is labeled again. The goal scorer on Friday night has earned the orange a corner kick. That's better from Labeled. As I mentioned, one-on-one, -on -one, just working on the dribble. He's got a lot of pace, as you saw, and very nearly got away from it. Good first touch to settle the ball. Tried to get the cross in. It's a good foot out, to be fair. Second, like the orange test the goalkeeper, Ryan Friedberg. Have not done it much tonight. Just one shot on goal. Here comes the cross. Out it goes. Be a foul against Syracuse. Referee's gone to his pocket here. Oh my, that's going to be Anthony Sinclair. Or excuse me. Might be Schoberg. I believe you're right, Philip. But credit to Sinclair. You see, he has the captain's armband for a reason. Schoberg wants to plead his case, and immediately Sinclair says, No, don't say anything. Go away. You're only going to make this worse for yourself. It's a new rule this year that you can't have referees hounded by players. Only one is allowed to talk to them at a time, and usually that's the captain's duty. That's Kurt Lemkul, who's still down on the ground. And Colin Byro is saying, hey, get up. And the referee saying, well, there's no need for that. You know, it's a physical battle. Let him get to his feet on his own power. But time not the issue yet for Syracuse, but if things don't change, that will. It's another yellow card against SU. And the official is trying to come in between again. There is a lot of frustration between Hemphrey Sinclair and Matthew Gonsalves. That could be a really physical challenge here in a minute. No, it's smart from the referee. That's that's smart officiating because you saw everybody was getting mad. Somebody was going to do something rash. So even for just a little bit of contact, you blow the whistle and you let the adrenaline just simmer down a little bit. Let cooler heads prevail. Take a second to regroup and restart the play. That last foul goes on. 
Sam Waynes. Number 18 for Cornell tonight. Eight for the Orange. Orange applying the pressure in their attacking half. But it's out of bounds again to the Big Red. And another whistle. This one will go against the Orange. Just over 23 minutes to play here at SU Soccer Stadium. Zach Letts and Philip Galani here with you on ACC Network Extra. A goal in the 13th minute from Connor Drown. The only tally so far. A tumble inside the box. Will that be a penalty? Yes, it will. It is earned by Matthew Gonsalves. A little too aggressive on the challenge from Abdi Salim. You see, got him right on the knee. And how about this? A chance for some breathing room here for the Big Red if they can convert. 0 for 1 on penalty kicks this season, R. Cornell. And what an opportunity. And that's poor from Salim. He's a player that's you know, injured last year, came back this year, and has really been playing very well for the most part, just slowly building up minutes. I mentioned earlier there was going to be a rash foul. I didn't think it'd be in the area. It's a stone wall penalty and a really, really good chance for Cornell to go up 2 nothing. Gonsalves, the junior forward from Everett, Massachusetts. Trying to make this 2-0 to the visiting side. And a precise finish. Matthew Gonsalves makes it 2-0 Cornell. It's a very well taken spot kick. Tunes out all the noise. He's put in the corner with pace. Maybe not so much the corner, but still with pace. And Sheely goes the wrong way, and it's 2-0 Big Red, and an excellent reaction at the corner flag. You see the emotion of this rivalry that's gone on for 101 years. And the Big Red could walk away from SU Soccer Stadium with a huge upset in 23 minutes time. For the first time this season, Syracuse has conceded multiple goals in a game. Three goals conceded in the first 10 matches. Two goals conceded to their rivals from Ithaca tonight. And with 23 minutes remaining, the Big Red in a good position to pull off the upset. Ranked for the first time this season earlier today, a dream seven in one start for John Smith's team and they've looked more than worthy of that ranking. I had a feeling Gonsalves was going to have something to say tonight. You mentioned he's from Everett, Mass. He played club with the Boston Bolts, and the Syracuse faithful among you will know that that's the club that Miles Robinson played for, and now a center back with the U.S. men's national team. Labeled initially, had it oh. in the box. And look out. A real it's, it's, aggressive challenge. And Kisa Kingi's down. want to see what the referee does here because that was very late. Pure frustration in that challenge. No attempt made to win the ball. Got another look here as labeled initially fell to the ground and then went sliding into that leg and Kingy came down awkwardly. The ball was long gone and you know I think labeled is very lucky to not get put in the referee's pocketbook for that sort of challenge. The aggressive physical style that has not stopped. And now a foot race is Danny Loco trying to get back to it. 
Here's a near giveaway. My goodness. It is a giveaway. A look on net, and it's just over the upper 90. Oh, it nearly went from bad to worse for the Orange. And Russell Sheely is furious, and rightly so. Booster Schoberg knows better. Checks his surroundings and then just under hits the back pass. That's a hospital ball. And really fortunate to see that chance from Samways go that far over the bar because he could have and should have done a lot better with it. Once again, the Syracuse back line just miscommunicating. Threaded right ahead beautifully, Nathan Apoku. Opportunity in front of the net. Went sliding down and boy to the big red catch a break. Kristen Curdy wins it back. A Levante Johnson at point blank range, but he just couldn't stay on his feet, Philip. That was hard to watch. It's a great ball from Apoku. It's hit so well, and Johnson made oh. his run too soon and really tried his best to stay on two feet. And in the end, was never going to get any power on that. Again, just making the run a little bit too soon. It's so hard to be patient at the pace of the college game that Syracuse plays, that Cornell plays. Got a little bit ahead of himself, and that was the golden opportunity to make it 2-1, and Johnson never gave himself a chance. And now, the free kick for the Big Red, and on the clock not on the side of Syracuse. 20 minutes to play, and now you need two strikes to get back in. Poku forcing the issue again. Knocked out of bounds by the senior, Cam McQuatt. You have to figure this urgency from the Orange has to get dialed up a bit. Another near giveaway again. Collision on the far side. Here come the big red. Gonsalves and Kisa Kingi. Right into the chest of Russell Shealy. What could have ended the game, really, if that one had... A couple of Syracuse players on the bench have head in hands because they know Kingy should have done a lot better with that. But a couple of players losing their footing, really, and it just speaks to the physicality of this game. These players are worn out. Cornell has done a great job of it. Here come the big run again. Booted out of bounds, and... Philip, it's looked like, even since this penalty kick that's made it 2-0, a different Cornell offense. They're getting numbers forward. They're getting chances. And this Syracuse defense has looked incredibly uncomfortable. I think the word you're looking for is just dejected, really. I mean, the offense had gotten forward so many times in the tail end of the first half and had a couple chances to start the second. None of them looked really promising. And then two bad mistakes from defenders. And it's 2-0. It's an unforgiving position, especially in a formation with only three at the back. Now with an opportunity forward, Colin Byros. Crossed in by Labels. Finds a white shirt back. But Levante Johnson settles it down. Takes the deflection for a corner kick. And an opportunity that Syracuse really desperately needed. Byros just needed to play that ball one touch sooner. You saw Poku getting a little bit frustrated. He wanted that diagonal slide rule pass and didn't get it. They re-rack and go again from the corner. Here it comes in. A poop from the outside of the box. The Orange win it back. And they find another opportunity. Vontae Johnson settles it down. Now with space in front, he'll go on net. And nearly had the first orange goal of the night. The most impressive save from the freshman, Ryan Friedberg. And Johnson got a lot more space. Great 50-50 shoulder challenge. I think he got more space than he was expecting. Tried to just curl that into the top corner with the instep. And in the end, started that ball's path a little bit too close to the keeper. Another foul against Syracuse. Drawn by Danny Loco. And you can 
sense the frustration, the dejection, like you said, Philip. Starting to seep in now with less than 17 minutes to play. Cleared out of bounds by Serrano. And a substitution here for the Orange. Kalov back on. To the bench goes Labels. You got to see what Syracuse does with Kalov back on the pitch because Vontae Johnson and Nathan Poku have been responsible for basically starting every attack. A long ball played up to them. They have to take it down with the defender putting pressure behind and the problem with that is they've been beat in the physical aspect of the game by this Cornell back line. So really the attacks have not been fruitful for the Orange. They've got to find a way to build it up through midfield, play to feet rather than just send it skyward. Well, Levante Johnson with maybe Syracuse's best look of the night. It's just its second shot on goal for the entirety of this match. That has been the story. Cornell's, Cornell's physicality has prevented Syracuse from getting looks. They may have one here. Kalov's looking for a handball. He does not get it. And this crowd, Nancy frustrated. There's no whistle there. And to see Poku, Kalov, it's just the first touch is a little heavy. Oh, ooh, I don't know. Okay, so hold on. Let's, let's break this down, right? So. His hand is way above his shoulders, right? So the new rule with handball, because they change this rule every year, the new rule with handball is if you're making yourself unnaturally bigger with the play. When you have your hands up above your shoulder line like that, yeah, that counts as it. But the other factor with that one is how much time did he have to react to the ball, right? Kalov was maybe less than a yard away from him and just booted the ball as hard as he could. It took a weird deflection and then up off his arm. So I, under, I understand the no call, I also understand why Syracuse were a little irate at that no call, but in the end, it's it's such a subjective rule, and I think the no call is probably the right way to go. A call that could have given Syracuse life had it been awarded a penalty kick instead. And the Orange still fighting for their lives in this game. Now, just over 14 minutes to play. The goal in the 13th minute by Connor Drought. And the goal in the 67th minute, the penalty kick by Matthew Gonsalves. That has made it 2-0. See, the, the handball rule is always something that excites me as a referee, right? Because you listen to my whole spiel. I had, what, like a minute or two to explain that? On the field, you've got three, four words to tell that to an official. And you see Ian McIntyre telling his team to push it forward, telling them only to pick up that urgency. that has not been there in the attacking half for much of this final 45. Ola Gunley plays it forward, headed back out, and there is a Syracuse player. Boselli has it blocked away. And boy, hasn't that been the story. Here's Morales, he gets it taken away. Kalov, looking for an orange shirt in the box. He is hounded. And once again, outstanding defense that time. It's the captain, Emeka Anelli. Ola Gunley cannot find an orange shirt. Here come the big red on the counter. And it's yet another whistle. And it's a booking. And Freddie Sinclair going into it. Ooh, I'm not sure. Maybe the referee just trying to calm things down a little bit, but there wasn't a lot in that for a yellow card we've seen fouls in this game that arguably have been a lot more physical that haven't warranted a booking. 
But, you know, sometimes you get out the yellow card just to settle the tempers a bit, and Samway is unfortunate to go into the pocketbook. Free kick into the box, and once again, the confidence and the command of Freenberg, a true freshman who's been sensational tonight, prevents it from there even being a chance. So it looks like the yellow card was awarded for unsporting behavior, which that probably hits the nail on the head. That makes sense. Didn't see a lot of contact in that. Maybe delay of the restart in there as well, but sometimes you just got to settle tempers down by pulling out the yellow card. Kalov settles it down, but then boots it right into the chest of Kingi. Cornell has gotten bodies in front of the ball this entire night, Philip. They've blocked the lanes for Syracuse shooting very well, but need to get numbers back here. Here come the orange. Levante Johnson threads it ahead. Opportunity inside the box. Comes back out in a mistouch. A misplay from Johnson, who had a clear look on net. And Cornell got away with one there. It's just, it's just a little too long of a ball in the area for that overlapping run that needs to be played one touch sooner so the defense doesn't have the time to set up for that in-swinging cross. And yeah, we're not going to harp on that volley because I don't know if Levante Johnson will want to see that again. Oh, we've seen the yellow card again. Goodness. Wow. Well, for the second time here in the last couple of minutes, and this one, I'll go against Ole Olu Oyagunli. 11 minutes left. I don't know. There's a decent shout that there might only be 21 players on the pitch by the end of this one. That pocket of the referee has been active tonight. And again, for unsporting and a quick decision made by the referee. Syracuse did have a player sent off in its last home game. Giorgio Koshevsky. That was its first loss of the season, a 1-0 defeat to Virginia. Here, with 11 men on the pitch, they find themselves down 2-0. Down by multiple goals for the first time all season. A position Ian McIntyre's team, adversity they've really not been faced with. And I think the thing that they're going to be talking about going into the game against number four Wake Forest is that those two goals, in large part, were self-inflicted. Sure, Cornell had a couple chances, but like Syracuse, none of them were really promising. It's a miscommunication at the back in the first half, and then just an incredibly reckless challenge in the area in the second. Two mental lapses, two goals in the back of the net. It's only been five shots on goal for Cornell. Not the prettiest of games, but that's exactly the way that John Smith's team likes to play. Just outside the box, Syracuse with numbers back. Trying to find some opportunity, and it was not kept in bounds. Brandon Morales, the Ivy League player of the week. Now Syracuse has done a good job of neutralizing him, and this Cornell offense hasn't been anything truly special tonight, Philip, but, well, it hasn't had to be. Really, Coach Smith talked about Morales finding form. We mentioned it earlier, the last four games, he's had five goals, three assists, and for strikers, sometimes having a hot foot is better than consistent long run of play. And you mentioned, yeah, he, he hasn't been able to shoot a lot tonight. Cornell hasn't been either. It's just been Syracuse putting a knife in their own back sometimes, and... There's going to be a lot of work to be done here before that Wake Forest game. Waybold puts it into the box. An opportunity for Syracuse on net. Safe made and the rebound. Johnson cannot find an opportunity on net. But Colin Byros from point blank range had a real chance. Now another opportunity. Julius Rausch can't convert and you see the frustration. And Byro's right there, forced the diving stop. Johnson with a look, he slips. This has been a game. Yes, it's, it's, it's one touch too many every time. First of all, that's a great save from Ryan Friedberg with 
a couple bodies in front of him really obstructing his view, but it's too many touches in the box. Johnson couldn't get it out of his feet and then hits it a little bit too hard, and then the shot wasn't well placed, and it's just, this is something Coach Smith talked about for Cornell. It's a games like this, there's not gonna be a lot of chances. It's gonna come down to who is taking those chances. Shot from distance, another fantastic stop. Oh, Lorenzo Boselli had an opportunity. And Friedberg with the left mitt kept it from going into the back of the net. What sounded like it took a touch on the way through, it did. And you heard Friedberg say, oh no, but excellent reaction save from the true freshman to preserve a clean sheet for now. Two of his best saves of the match coming in these last couple of minutes. And just kind of a bad takeaway there for Connor Drown. Syracuse gets it right back. But the clock, not their friend. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to play. 2-0 the Cornell advantage. Go on the 13th minute from the captain, Connor Drown. And then a penalty kick in the 67th minute from the substitution, Matthew Gonsalves. That has the big red potentially in position for a huge upset win. Their first victory over Syracuse in five years. You see Colin Pyros is asking for the official to stop the clock because the Cornell players aren't standing the 10 yards they need to be. The clock will run. Saw Johnson had a couple chances in the air earlier. See who gets picked out this time. Here it comes in. Inside the six, now back out. Boselli plays it in. Opportunity, that is blocked. A poku from point blank range. Johnson picks it up. As SU awarded the corner kick. Racing. Syracuse needs two. Can sense that urgency. Kurt Kalov will take it. And Russell Sheely, nearly at midfield, will try to play it back in. Give Syracuse another offensive opportunity. Real tough collision. And here's the dangerous Brandon Morales in space, but loses it pretty swiftly. That's a well-timed challenge by, I think it was Abdi Salim. Seen a couple of yellow cards already, and that's a really good opportunity for a player like Morales to take a challenge and take the yellow card and in the end able to drown out the clock a little bit. Five and a half to play here at SU Soccer Stadium. They wrestle to the ground after the volley from Kurt Kalov. A free kick here for Syracuse. The Orange will look to play it quickly. Colin Byros, the graduate student. Saw the last cross, last two crosses go to the front post. Wonder if they try that again. Looks like Johnson's there. Byros boots it in. And another jumping stop. Ryan Friedberg has read those crosses perfectly all night. Credit to him. I mean, the ball was a little bit over hit from Byros, but Freeberg with the tenacity to get off his line and get in the air. Booster Schoberg's been in the air a couple times. As Sheely just about got away with it. Flirting with fire. Could have been a third goal for Cornell had that gone slightly differently. Now here come the Orange. Threaded ahead. On the far side, the goal scorer, Connor Droughts, with three orange shirts back. I think he'd be content with maybe just melting this clock a little bit. Here come a couple more substitutions. Dakota Jonke is in. Issa Kingi is also in. A little bit of a blessing for Syracuse. It just stops the clock for a moment. And a goal kick as well. Thought it might have been a corner for a second, but got to be productive first and second ball. See who wins it. Drown just clears it away. The Big Red had numbers ahead for a moment. 
Now Gonsalves has gone to the ground. To the frustration of Syracuse. And it does stop the clock with three minutes 44 remaining. Gonsalves, who really drew that foul call well inside the box. Put Cornell up, 2 0. And that looks like maybe just a cramp situation, Phil. It's also a stop the clock situation again. You, know, you see this happen in the late stage of games where you want to preserve the lead. You need a second to regroup. Player goes down and needs medical attention and just takes the foot off the gas pedal and interrupts that run of momentum for Syracuse. But as you see, Coach Smith, the Big Red, has not been quiet through 87 minutes and is continually giving his side instruction to try and see this upset out. Salvez comes off the pitch. And for him is the forward sophomore Will Carnival. As this clock remains stopped. The Orange just kind of anxiously waiting to play it forward as you see with Shealy and Schobert. Mr. Schobert. Now Abdi Salim one on one. Orange with much of its 11 ahead in the attacking half. As you would expect, now in a 2 0 hole with just three and a half remaining. Cornell doing a good job of forcing the Syracuse midfield to check in and just taking them away from the attacking third of the pitch. Another aggressive challenge from Kisa Kingi sends Kala flying. Referee doesn't blow that whistle. They've now under three to play. Sinclair to get it back off the ricochet. Cornell keeping bodies in front and stymieing this orange offense as they've done all night. I think the orange had the appeal for maybe one or two late challenges there, but you can see there's nobody on the screen right now. Oh, there they are. Everybody's forward. Somebody needs to win that second ball. Try and maintain possession. Looks like it might be Callum. Surrounded by three Cornell defenders. I know you can guess how that went. Racing ahead. Ameka and Nelly. Soft touch ahead. Nick Allen on the near side. You can hear the calls on the sideline to just go to the corner and drown out the clock. It's not pretty, but uh, an ugly win is always better than a pretty loss. Just go to the corner, let the clock wind down. Try and weather a challenge or two. Syracuse win it back, though. Up ahead with an opportunity. Giona labels. Pass comes in. Or a white shirt was waiting for. Nathan Apoku. Now Kalov inside the 18. Guarded tightly. Guarded well, and the opportunity evaporates. Christian Curdy with now just a minute 20. Locked away again. That's Kurt Lemkul getting that chest and shoulders in front of it. Anytime Syracuse is trying to put it near the six over the middle of the box, that has so often been the result. Amphrony Sinclair threads it in a Poku. Levante Johnson could not get a boot on it. Instead, another clearance. The cheers of those rooting for Cornell in attendance. Under a minute to play. Cross comes in. And a Poku, if he was maybe a step further, may have had a look. Fender got just enough on it, but Syracuse in the last minute or so have been taking too many touches in the box and haven't gotten the looks they need. Schoberg's off. No. Where What's the referee called here? Is he called the penalty? It does appear so. 
A booking inside the box. Oh my goodness. In the final minute of play. And now the Orange, with time not on their side, will have their best look of the night. I thought he was about to send Booster Schoberg off. And Schoberg went tumbling to the ground. So here's the opportunity for Nathan Apoku. With just 17 ticks on the clock. Oh, hold on. Players are getting into it a little bit at the top of the area. Referee hasn't seen it yet. And you hear Coach McIntyre telling Kirk Kalov just to back away. Don't start anything right now. Everyone's standing up on the bench, on the edge of their seat here. Complete silence right now at SU Soccer Stadium. The referee instructing everyone to stay back on the line. Apoku gets one back for the Orange Lee. Syracuse finally finds the scoreboard, but it may be too little too late. Nathan Apoku with his team leading fifth goal of the season. 17 seconds left. I don't know how they do it, but Poku prevents the shutout, and that is how you take a penalty. Tucked away into the side netting, but no celebration from the talisman because he knows that just might not be enough. Only 17 seconds remain. Took the orange nearly the 90 full to find the back of the net. They avoid the shutout. Lemkul with a clearance. Doesn't need to find a white shirt. As the clock now reading under 10 seconds. Two seconds to go. The clock winds down. That does it. Cornell pulls off the upset in Syracuse. Stunning the number seven orange. Two to one the final here at SU Soccer Stadium. And for a Cornell team that just broke into the national rankings for the first time earlier today, this is a huge road win. One of the best teams in the country playing away from a home, and they played their game. It was gritty, it was ugly, it was physical, but in the end, they get the job done, and that's a massive upset for the Big Red. Oh, what a match. Cornell, they emerge victorious. The Big Red pick up 